an iced out Florida license plate, a $500,000 box of crayons, and a literal diamond plated toilet. These are the stupidest pieces of jewelry ever bought by rappers, with 21 Savage creating a necklace to honor his own head. The 100 carat piece took two months to complete at a cost of 125,000, and was so over the top he retired from buying jewelry afterwards. Every time I meet someone who's very, very rich, like wealthy, I've never seen them with jewelry on, although Lil Pump apparently ignored the message as he'd have his own face made out of diamonds less than a year later. At a cost of $360,000, Lil Pump's chain received comments such as, imagine the pain knowing the colossal waste of money this was, only made worse given others thought it didn't even look like him. I look more like Lil Pump than that chain, and looks like Gollum, although after showing the chain off in a GQ episode, Lil Pump flexed another piece of jewelry which was somehow even stupider. The chain reading drug addict was bought for 380 grand, which when combined with his Esketit and Gucci gang chains, meant Lil Pump spent over a million dollars on jewelry items that are no longer relevant. However, this is nothing compared to how much Rick Ross spent to put his face on a necklace, given he'd purchased this atrocity for 1.5 million, or about five regional houses. For whatever reason, the chain also featured its own Rolls Royce logo, although in case this wasn't dumb enough, Rick Ross then ordered a second chain of himself wearing the first chain, so Rick Ross could wear Rick Ross who was wearing Rick Ross. The necklace might have been inspired by the game's equally funny Jesus piece wearing a Jesus piece, although in terms of Jesus pieces, they get much worse. For example, Lil Boosie's Christ the Redeemer pendant was bigger than an infant, weighing in at 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms, which when combined with his equally crazy Holy Bible chain, not only made him look ridiculous, but likely also gave him back pain. It's therefore no surprise that after Boosie flexed the chains on Instagram, his audience stated, Bible says don't worship false idols, this guy gets a Holy Bible gold chain, SMH this generation man, and this is whack on so many levels. Please hire a financial advisor today. Boosie claimed to have bought the chains because God had given him everything, although in terms of God honoring jewelry, Boosie's was only the start. Because at the 2010 BET Awards, Kanye West unexpectedly walked out with the biggest chain ever worn by a musician, honoring the Egyptian god Horus which hung lower than his waist. The chain accompanied an equally crazy 24 carat five finger pyramid ring, with the two items costing a total of $300,000. Complex wrote about the piece in 2016 stating, this shit is dumb, this chain is stupid, like two plus two equals seven, yet Lil Baby apparently thought this equation was normal, as he dropped thousands of dollars on a Rolex and iced out chain for his son's third birthday. This was followed by a further $100,000 worth of jewelry for his seventh birthday, which understandably attracted criticism. Instead of buying his son assets at a young age, he buys him liabilities. Great parenting. What does a seven year old need jewelry for? Let the kid grow up and play with toys. Rappers raising their kids to go broke. Too much resources at too early of an age spoils the milk, given little baby son's next chain might have been a $500,000 box of crayons. Sean Kingston bought the piece at the age of 17 and had to have his sister mail it across the country when the necklace needed repairs. However, Sean Kingston's $500,000 chain was stolen from the mail. The authorities were alerted about the missing bling when the ship package arrived at the jeweler's shop empty. Kingston's sister reportedly only insured the extravagant parcel for just $500, yet this might have been a good thing. The ugliest necklace ever. Whoever took it did the guy a favor, but this isn't the only ugly necklace that wound up getting stolen. After dropping $1 million on a chain reading Ice Age, Mike Jones went to bed and woke up to the piece missing. I was sleeping in my house one day and I woke up and my homie stole it from me, you feel me? Really? Yeah. And while you could argue that the chain wasn't ugly, his negligence made the story pretty damn stupid. A million dollars worth of jewelry around his neck and he fell asleep without first locking it into a safe. Genius, although there's nothing less genius than Ply's entire jewelry collection. After dropping his fourth studio album called Goon, Ply celebrated its release by ordering a diamond encrusted goon snapback, an iced out goon license plate, and so many goon ski masks it's hard to even count them. However, his stupidest piece of jewelry might have been his iced out clothing iron, or his ridiculously large gold Cuban chain, which weighed in at 15 and a half pounds or seven whole kilos. My IQ just dropped 20 points by watching this video alone. At least Ply's jewelry made for a funny story, as the background behind Lil John's awful crunk ain't dead chain was nothing short of depressing. Lil John was so confident that the 
the Krung genre of music wouldn't die. He blew $500,000 on the necklace back in 2007, in the process setting a Guinness World Record for the largest diamond pendant in the world. However, just a year after making the expensive claim that Krunk wasn't dead, the genre died completely, leaving Lil Jon with a totally irrelevant chain. It's therefore no surprise people have said, Lil Jon's 500k Krunk Ain't Dead chain really hasn't aged well, although there's an equally terrible necklace that caused even more damage. T-Pain's big ass chain. After first buying it, he'd write on Twitter, I told everybody I'm not playing no more. Anybody want to try out Do Me, then we're going at it like next door neighbours. Believe that. 10 pounds, 197 carats. Very, very real. I don't know what fake feels like. Unlike almost every other piece so far, T-Pain has since talked extensively about the chain, including the reason he initially bought it. It was a dare. Some dude on the side of the stage before I went on stage said, I bet you won't get a chain. That says big ass chain. How much it originally cost him. How much? Oh, 400, 400. 400,000? Yeah. And how much it's worth now. It's therefore no surprise T-Pain called the piece his biggest financial regret. The dumbest shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've done some dumb things. Yeah, but, but this one up here. With the item being so ludicrous, most of the public thought it was fake. I always thought it was fake. I thought it was Until fake Until you too. said that. I, that, was oh, yeah, that yeah. I was like, nobody, you know why I always thought it was fake? Because I was like, nobody would buy, really buy it that. It should have been. I, would, I, was I wanted thing. it to I was be. Like, <laughs> it should have been fake. In addition to the big ass chain, T-Pain spent a further $400,000 on a range of liquor bottle jewelry which he then somehow misplaced completely. So what happened to those bottles? You still have those? He belted those down too. I don't know where they are. You don't know when none of those? Oh my gosh. I lost them. You lost them? Yeah. Well, $400,000 just gone in the wind. Yeah. Which was something that couldn't happen to Lil Wayne's teeth, but this is also what made them so damn stupid. You see, while most rappers go for a removable diamond grill, Lil Wayne spent $150,000 to have diamonds glued onto his actual teeth. See, oh, these don't come out like the But other are they grills. all diamonds? In oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Meaning he needed to brush them after every single meal and could only take them out with a highly invasive surgery. Lil Wayne went to jail roughly one year after getting the diamonds, yet was able to delay his sentence by completing complaining his teeth hurt, with 6 9 also showing that jail and bad jewellery often go hand in hand. On the cheaper end, 6 9 spent $750,000 on a diamond-covered Bruce the Shark from Finding Nemo, yet there were two more million-dollar chains which were even dumber purchases. Firstly, there was his spinning rainbow 6 9 pendant, which he proudly covered in water to prove that it was waterproof, although he should have taken the chance to show off his second million-dollar chain, which acted as a water pistol and simply said water. However, if we're on the topic of stupid functional jewelry, then Soldier Boy's Lamborghini necklace has to come next. Soldier Boy explained that he'd bought an actual Lamborghini and needed some jewelry to match, so he'd spend 250,000 on a Lamborghini chain, which had moving wheels and its own remote control, meaning he could drive the chain in various parts of his house. Soldier Boy eventually gave the chain to a friend as a birthday present, although he still had other pieces of highly speculative jewelry. For example, he dedicated a different piece to the Transformers movie and spent 500 grand on a mediocre chain reading The World Is Yours. Although while Soldier Boy might have owned the Earth, the entire solar system belonged to Takeoff. The monstrous piece featured four planets, two stars, the sun, and its own NASA rocket ship. The piece was valued by a jewelry expert who appeared on GQ. That setup right there to get done with all those carrots, all that ice, at least a half a million bucks. Although the other two Migos members might have taken things even further. For example, Quavo spent 250000 to put himself in the Ratatouille movie, which accompanied two equally wild Yoda and Crash Bandicoot chains, neither of which were as crazy as Offset's most viral piece, a diamond-encrusted trap house. This is 250 a quarter. It's heavy too. It's more than a kilo. The chain was hailed as being, quote, ridiculously detailed, complete with graffiti and oven and two figurines of Offset, both of them armed, although the trap house wasn't nearly as gangster as Shorty Lowe's crack vial on a necklace or Method Man's ice pick chain, which he couldn't get past TSA security because they thought it could be used as a weapon. Ghostface's Versace medallion was somehow even more obnoxious, especially when combined with his solid gold eagle bracelet, although for young jocks Hustle Nomics chain, 
pain, there are simply no words to explain how bad it is. Rather, we might have to look at the jewelry owned by Lil Duval, whose entire collection is designed to mock these other rappers. For example, he showed up to a birthday bash wearing a plastic fake ass chain before trolling every other rapper with a diamond encrusted toilet. He then post an image of rapper chains to his Instagram with a caption reading, my toilet chain almost 10 years old and I'm still shitting on all of you. Although if there's one man who could out troll the troll, it's gotta be Flavor Flav, whose oversized diamond covered clocks are so damn stupid, it makes him an extremely memorable artist. Giving off a similar vibe is Slick Rick's atrocious satellite dish looking Rolex, which was shown on GQ with the rest of his chains, all of which were bought because of their crazy size. I love how he keeps trying to put meaning behind the reasons he bought his jewelry, but it really was just because it was the biggest thing in the store. But if Riff Raff Shark Teeth Grill has taught us anything, it's that rappers buy these terrible pieces of jewelry so they can stand out from the crowd. And whether that be DJ Mustard's Mustard Bottle, Waka Flucker's Foghorn Leghorn Rooster, or Just Blaze's PS3 Controller, it's safe to say that these rappers have achieved exactly that.